Hello dear ones, it's Alice. It rained like crazy last night and there was a clap of thunder right near where I was at home and uh, my cat got so scared she went running off and hid someplace. I couldn't find her for a while and then uh, uh, it felt like you know the rain just increased and increased and suddenly it felt like um, there was this huge bucket of, full of water just over the roof of my apartment and all of a sudden it got emptied onto the, t the roof of the apartment that was that it was that strong of a rain and then all of a sudden it stopped and it went out in the living room and there in the living room the roof was leaking just a little bit so I put um, put a bucket under the leak and it all came out all right. Didn't didn't rain that much more that night. So today I went I went to look in in one of my spots where I sit to see how one of my little um, altars has done. And and here it is. You see, there's a little point in place where you could stand next to in the front and in the foreground and then in the background is this little altar place. Well, it was looking somewhat the worst for wear because in this area it looks like all of the water comes running down there. So I replenished the juniper sprigs and put the pine cones back together and put the rocks back together and there it is. Little meditation place. So while I'm standing here I thought I'd talk about something that's come to mind and so here we go all right I was talking to a friend last night about um, the role of our birth order in our in our amongst our siblings and how that affects our relationships throughout life and I'm going to try to find you something on the internet about this, but because of the rain, my internet's not working right now. But pretty soon, I'm going to find something. And uh, I think uh, I gather from talking to her that, um, and comparing that to my own life, that birth order has a lot to do with with how we interact with people. Now, in her case, in my case, we're um, the eldest child in our family. And they tend to carry quite a lot of responsibility for other people. For, because in probably in real life, lots of times, the parent said, you're the eldest, it's your responsibility to help take care of your younger brothers and sisters, or something like that, you know? And uh, for, in the case of a, of a child that is the youngest child in the family, uh, especially a big family, or one of the younger children, you won't find that at all. Instead, you'll find some kind of happy-go-lucky feeling and a feeling that other people are going to take care of them, which was the case when they were very young, you know. You might not have that much responsibility about money and security and so forth because the older siblings were looking out for them all the time. And then there's a child in the middle, you know, so I'll find all that. But, but the point of that conversation, I think, is um, we need to identify what role we're playing or what number of roles we're playing in, in life. Not because they're good or bad, but just so that we will know what we're doing uh, rotely and like a, uh, automatically. And we'll know, by observing, we'll know whether we want to continue with that behavior, you know what I mean? So, so that we can cho choose um, rationally what roles we, we want, and we'll have more choices in roles in life. And uh, apparently this is coming up for a lot of people, a kind of a process, because I was listening to Bill Ballard uh, just, the, just the night before, and I, it, th this whole process had been coming up for me, this process of... Um, being born, you know, being, actually dying and being reborn, a feeling that um, the old was coming to an end and that and kind of a desire to cling to that and fear of the death of the old and the, the thought that the rebirth of the new, the, into the new was coming along, you know. So 
So then I talked to my, and, and Bill Ballard confirmed all that. He talked about rebirth too. It was, it was really strange. I had been taking it kind of personally, but then when I heard Bill Ballard, I thought, geez, this may be happening with a large group of people right now. <laughs> and so then I heard my, my friend the next day talking about the same thing, and I was pretty clear on that, that we're all changing our roles and, and upgrading our understanding and awareness of everything that's going on in our relationships right now feels a lot like death. Some people are actually choosing to die rather than face this. Personally, I like to stay alive and I like to have my choices, but uh, you never know what the divine has in store for us. <laughs> so um, then today I went to church. And the funny thing is that uh, the sermon was on Luke 15. And there were three stories involved. The first one had to do with um, a shepherd. And he had a hundred sheep, and one of them got lost, and he went out looking for it. It's really important for him to find that one lost sheep. I'm sure you've heard that story. And then the next story was about a woman. She had ten coins, but she lost one coin. And she went looking through the whole house, and finally she found that coin. And she was so happy that she invited all her neighbors over to celebrate. And the last story was about... Um, a man, he had two sons, and the, the younger son, you remember that thing about the younger? <laughs> the younger son told his father, I'd like my inheritance now. So the father divided up all he had, and he, and he gave half to the younger son. And the younger son went off to a foreign land and spent all the money that he had until he had nothing whatsoever. Hard times fell upon that place. And he found himself actually working, feeding. He worked for someone else who had pigs, and that person asked him to go and, um, and feed the pigs. And he was so hungry, he wished he could eat the pig food, but nobody offered him any. So then he thought, what am I doing? The, the lowly people that work on my father's farm, they have plenty to eat. And... Um, I should just go back and, and beg my father for forgiveness and understanding. And he did that. And his father was so happy to see him. He said, my son who was lost is found again. And let us kill the fatted calf and let us feast and be happy. You know, something like that. <laughs> so, um, so they did that. And then the older son, who was very responsible and looking after his father's land and never spent any of the money, he was off in the fields taking care of things, and he heard all the music and the merrymaking, and he came back and asked a servant. He said, um, what is going on here? What is this? And, and the story was explained to him, and he got really angry and refused to go in. He says, I've been doing all the hard work all this time. What is this? You never, never did more than, you never even killed a, a goat for me and my friends. And so the father came out to talk to him, and he said, explained. He said, my son who was lost has come back again, and, and, and it's a time of rejoicing. And I assume everything was kind of knit up that way, right? Um, so so I, then the, the preacher went on, and he, and he had something interesting to say about these three stories. He said, um, what is, which of these stories, do you, which person in the stories do you identify with? Do you think of yourself as the lost sheep, as the sheep that are safe and, and found? Do you think of yourself in the role of Christ, passing no judgment on anyone? So I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> and uh, finally I came up with that actually I feel like I, ident I could identify with any of those and I think that's kind of a, a good uh, state of mind to have. Not to judge other people's roles, but just to, to see them very clearly. And the same with mine. And what the, what the preacher said was even more interesting. He said, um, we may think of ourselves as found, but there are parts of us, parts of our bodies that are not found. We may be mostly found, but nobody is completely found not in this dimension anyway he didn't say that <laughs> so uh, I think he was saying don't judge other people and and take a good look at yourself and just do what you can to to find yourself so that's the story for today finding oneself and
finding one's role and maybe not taking a role too seriously, even if we learned it to be the, the thing that we are when we were little kids. I wish you all a wonderful day. Not too rainy, no roof leaking. I hope your cat, if you have one, is not too scared. <laughs> all is well here, and I hope all is well with you. Love and blessings.